It's the most wonderful time of the year, and we're so glad you joined us today for the Accelerate Church broadcast with Pastor Jeremy File. Today, he's ministering on the real meaning of Christmas. Well, we don't want to miss it. Let's jump right into it now. This is a time of all times for you and I as Christians to be in touch with the real meaning of Christmas, okay? We don't get carried away with the paganism, with the commercialism of it all, but we're carried away with one thing. The king is here. And they're not opposed to singing about our king during this time. Isn't that amazing that I could sit there and hear that in an establishment last night here in Amarillo, Texas? But you're not that shocked by that, are you? Because you go out and shop and you hear that same song sung. You scan to a secular radio station and they'll be playing songs about Mary, did you know? Are you listening to me? Everyone's a lot more open to the seeds of the gospel if you'll plant them during this time. Because a lot of people have lost the true meaning of Christmas. If you and I don't know the real meaning of Christmas, this world won't know the real meaning of it either. I think about my dad working in a radio station years ago, and he came up on Christmas time, and that manager of that station or the boss man, whoever it was, said, you're about to figure out what Christmas is all about. And what he meant was the commercialism of it all and how you can make sales during Christmas time because everyone's on the hunt. Everyone's pretty much seasoned to shop during this time, right? But did you know Christmas isn't about shopping? <laughs> I hate to burst your bubble this morning. But Christmas isn't about shopping. No, Christmas is about one thing. The king is here. <laughs> Go to Luke chapter 2 and say, thank God for the word. Luke 2 verse 1, it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered or taxed. This census first took place while Cyrenius was governor of Syria. Verse 3, Luke 2. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Everybody say Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and the lineage of David. That's a very crucial, important piece. By the way, if you're like me and have ever wondered how is it Luke knew all these details, you might find this very interesting that both Matthew and Luke interviewed Mary when she was older. She had moved to Ephesus. There was John, the only apostle left that they tried to boil in oil, right? And he's living in Ephesus too. And Luke and Matthew both go interview Mary, and she tells them this detailed description of everything. Thank God for guys that did that so that we can look back and see how powerful this story really is the Christmas story. It's called Bethlehem. Why? David, excuse me, Joseph was of the house of David. Did you know Mary was too? They were distant relatives, but they both came out of David's line, and that's a very crucial piece of information because of what was prophesied before they ever lived. Verse number 5, Luke 2. So Joseph came to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife. They weren't married yet, but she was with child. Uh-oh. If you're a first-timer and you haven't really heard the story of Christmas, you might say, well, wait a minute, they were pregnant before they were actually married? This is the one and only time that God blessed that. Isn't that something? God was in this. Yeah, God was involved in the details. Verse 6, so it was, while they were there, the days were completed or accomplished, King James says, for her to be delivered and she brought forth her firstborn son, Luke 2, 7 says, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, also an interesting piece of information, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Well, there were in the same country, Luke 2, 8 says, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And isn't this interesting if I pause and tell you this? When God does something, he always likes to go to the shepherds first to go proclaim it to the whole world. <laughs> wow. Verse 9, Luke 2. And behold, an angel. A what? An angel. an angel of the Lord stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you Good tidings. Somebody say good news. Amen. Of great joy. Somebody say great joy. great joy. Not just a little bit. Great joy. 
I stepped in to my dad's house last night, and he had on the Texas Tech OU game, and Texas Tech had just taken the lead. I hadn't watched a lick of it. I said I was on a date. I wasn't watching football, so I was on a date with my wife, and I said, whoa, what's happening? Texas Tech's winning. My dad said, they didn't start out that way. About that time, they showed the sideline, and everybody over there, everybody, everybody, everybody's got a towel. Everybody's going nuts. Everybody's going crazy. Everybody's just jumping, jumping. My dad said, they look like they won the game. I said, one thing I can tell you, even though the volume's down, they must be winning. Because that's how winners act. Now, why have you held back your praise? I still had not figured that part out yet, but I'll say this. You're a winner in Christ. You ought to act like it. Amen? <laughs> uh, do you know what I saw demonstrated on the sideline of a Texas Tech Red Raider football game? Great joy. When the angels showed up, they said, I've got good news. This should bring you great joy. So if you're depressed this morning, you might want to ask yourself, what on earth is wrong with me? You might want to shake yourself and wake up before you end up missing out like many people did. Think about this. Many people missed out, though an angel showed up and made this declaration straight from the throne room. I bring you good tidings of great joy, which should be to how many people? So see, if you're a person, you've got a reason to get excited. No, I don't. I know, I know. It's been another rough week. But if you'll press into the things of God, all that can fall right off of you. But you're going to have to press into joy if you're going to get it. There's strength in joy. That means there's weakness in depression and sadness. Luke 2, verse 11. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. Maybe he talked slower so they could catch it. Verse 13. And suddenly there was with the, with the angel a multitude, I want you to get this, of heavenly hosts praising God and saying. Now there's heaven shows up where the shepherds were. Heaven. Somebody say heaven. This is a heavenly host. Heaven's attention was on this moment. Maybe we ought to give this moment some more of our attention instead of just putting up Christmas lights and a Christmas tree and buying presents and saying, all right, oh, man, it's another stressful time of the year. No, no, no. There's really a reason behind all this. And all of heaven took notice. This is a time of praise. This is a time of joy. This is a time where you ought to, well, praise the Lord. Just raise your hands right now and say, Lord, I praise you. I magnify your name. Be exalted in my life. In Jesus' name. Luke 2, 14. Glory to God in the highest. Say that. Glory to God in the highest. And then there's what he said. On earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Isn't that good? Well, he wasn't done. It says, so it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let us now go. Now. See what happens when you get a visitation from heaven? You're raring to go. Nothing's going to hold you back. Glory to God. Where are we going to go? To Bethlehem, where the angel talked about the city of David. Why? Wow, we want to see this thing that's come to pass, which the Lord has made known Unto us. I want you to notate this if you're taking notes. All of heaven marked this event. What? Jesus being born. And it's worth celebrating, and you're in my life, if the Lord would send angels and all of a heavenly host to sing and to praise God about it. Maybe we ought to praise God about it. I think many have too narrow of a view of this celebration. Don't get me wrong. I love the details. That the, you know, Jesus was born and put in a stable. It was actually a cave, if you didn't know that. There was no room in the inn, angels appearing to the church. I love all the details of all this. But I want you to look back at verse 13 for a minute so we can get a glimpse into the real meaning of what we celebrate here at Christmas. What? Suddenly, with the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill. Toward men. There was a definite change when Jesus showed up in God's dealing with man. The way God's demeanor, for lack of a better word, 
was turned toward men was different here. And though many humans didn't recognize it, much like today, all of heaven recognized this is a reason to shout. This is a reason to praise. This is a reason that you ought to be excited because now peace is offered. Goodwill is offered. Wow. So this multitude of heavenly hosts showed up from on high to honor the newborn prince of peace, to teach the shepherds who were about to be the first ever proclaimers of the gospel what to think and what to speak of him, who while he appeared little in size as an infant, was the object of the worship of the angels of God Almighty. Isn't that something? The birth of Jesus notated a definite difference from God in heaven toward men. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's Word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. Jesus came so that you wouldn't be bound by the evil of this age where you find yourself alive, but so you'd be delivered. The deliverer was here. Your way of escape from evil was here. Glory to God. Say it boldly. I've been delivered from this present evil age. Well, then, brothers and sisters, we ought not act like everybody in this present evil age. If we've been delivered, we've been set free. And this was according to the will of our God and Father. I'm here to tell you one reason the heavenly host showed up is because the deliverer was born. Oh, not that many people recognized it. But boy, I tell you what, he was here. And everything changes. That's the real meaning of Christmas. There's no reason to continue bound by evil. If evil has any pull in your life, in any area, you need to rise up now in the authority that Jesus gave you, and you need to say, no, in Jesus' name, I will not yield to you any longer. God created you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, not the evil one under Satan's image. Are you listening to me? He has delivered us from this evil. There's no reason to continue bound. God is with us. Emmanuel. The king is here. (laughs) Jesus, born as a lamb for the sins of this world. 1 John chapter 2 says, My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. Oh, listen to this. And if anyone sins, listen to the way this is worded. Totally different than the way most modern Christians think. Most modern Christians don't relate to a lifestyle sin-free. Because they've sinned so many times. Now, there's another side of that coin where some people are arrogant and never look at the mirror of the word and realize that they're sinners. Until you do that, you're not ready to receive the good news. But, but listen, most in this church at least, you hear enough of the word of God and the law of God preached that you understand that you're in a desperate need for a Savior. Anybody with me? That's where I found myself. I'm in a desperate need of a Savior. Because left to myself, I make a mess. Let me ask you again, since that wasn't ever hand. How many understand you are in desperate need of a Savior? Yeah, you found yourself in that position when you judged yourself according to the Word of God. Well, now that you're saved, now you can go into the New Testament like this and see John, the apostle, same one that had moved to Ephesus I talked about earlier with Mary, the mother of Jesus. They didn't live together, but I'm saying they lived there close by each other. What you find out is this. Is he is instructing Christians. He says, my little children, I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, look at this part. We have an advocate. Somebody say advocate. Advocate. With the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the righteous. He was born to suffer our punishment. The just for the unjust. That he might bring us to God. Jesus our advocate, that alone is reason enough to celebrate him and celebrate his birth. What does it mean, an advocate? Well, it means he publicly, in heaven, 
pleads our case before the Father that our sins repented of would not be charged against us. Did you catch that? That's a, that's a good thing for you, and that's a good thing for me. See, now you can sit up here and act the way you want to act, but I'm just going to tell you, you've sinned sometime in your life. And you need the advocate. Whew. Jesus, our advocate, he stands for the application of the pardon of all repented sin. I hope you caught that. Somebody said, well, it's all sin, even future sin. Well, you haven't committed it first off, so that's stupid. Second off, you haven't repented of it. And he's commanded all men and women everywhere to repent. And that is the catch. You must repent, and you must put your faith in the blood of Jesus and follow him. That's it. You're, it's like a three-step process. Repent. Everybody say repent. repent. Put your faith in his blood. Put, say that. Faith in the blood. blood. And third, follow him. That's it. That's that simple. The real meaning of Christmas is now the ball's been bounced to your court. Are you going to take those three steps? It's so simple. But Jesus is our advocate, and he stands for the application of pardon of all sin. He stands in our favor that our sins have been laid on him, that he's borne them, that his blood has been shed for the remission of our sins, and he's made full payment for him himself. Hmm. That's why heaven rejoiced. Because he came to do that, to become our advocate. Therefore, it is justice that our sins formerly committed should not be laid to our charge, but that the forgiveness of them should be applied. That's good news, isn't it? Isn't that good news? So if you got a speeding ticket, because you weren't paying attention and you were speeding. I've only had two tickets my whole life. Both of them were shyster deals. I ain't going to talk about the thousands of times I wasn't caught. I'm going to talk about the two I was. And that's how we are. Isn't that right? One time I was going 57 in what's normally a 55-mile-an-hour zone. I didn't know they had changed it. I didn't pay attention. So you, it's amazing what will cost you just from your lack of paying attention. The answer comes forth right here from the Word of God and from this pulpit week after week. But if you're not paying attention because you're distracted for whatever reason, you can miss it just from not paying attention. That was me. The guy pulled me over. I said, yes, sir, what's the problem? He said, you were going 57. And I said, yes, sir, isn't that a 55-mile-an-hour zone? He said, well, it was, but they changed it to 50. I said, whoops. Well, I was going the speed of the flow of everyone. He said, I need your license and your registration, please. That one cost me about 175 bucks. Bummer of a deal, right? Well, thankfully, I, since I hadn't had a ticket before that, I was able to take defensive driving, just wiped right, wiped right off of my record. That right there is exactly what it was when I paid for it. It was wiped off of my record. Are you listening to me? But what Jesus did is he said, okay, you're guilty. And he came and wiped your transgression right off of your record by his blood. Shoo-wee. This is the real meaning of Christmas. This is why it's worth celebrating. You know, I had a guy tell me, well, why don't y'all get all excited about Jesus being born? Because I have no other advocate. I have nobody else that paid my debt. I have nowhere else to go. You celebrate every birth like that? No. But I'll celebrate his birth. Amen. Just smile at your neighbor one time. Just smile. It feels so good to smile. Look at verse number 2, 1 John 2 is where we're reading right now. Thank God for the word. He himself, Jesus, is a propitiation for our sins. There's a word you don't use every day, but if you've been a disciple of Jesus, you've heard it before. And look at this. Not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Now we need to know what, what does Propitiation mean, that, that big word that we don't use on a daily basis, means our atoning sacrifice. Jesus himself is the, do you notice that? He's the atoning sacrifice. Somebody pointed out, well, it says Jesus, an advocate. He didn't say the, well, that's because you also have the Holy Spirit. But check this out. He himself is the atoning sacrifice, the payment for our sins. Jesus is the one that paid. There's nobody else. There's no one else. Jesus is it. 
He is the atoning sacrifice, and not only for ours, but also the world. So think about this. If Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and this time is set aside in our life, Christmas, to celebrate his birth, we ought to celebrate. Because who else has atoned for your sins? You certainly haven't, and you couldn't. Even if someone said, all right, hold your index finger, I'm going to chop it off, and that's your payment, that would not be sufficient. You'd miss that thing. Yeah, you would, because you use it to point all the time. Some of you are like, as long as you don't touch my thumbs, I can still get on social media and be a thug out there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Stick your thumb out there. What if, what if that happened? What if the Lord did that? You went on there and slandered again? Stick your thumb out here. That wouldn't be payment enough. Are you listening? It wouldn't do anybody any good. If you don't get that out of your heart, and the only way to get that out of your heart is to receive him as your atoning sacrifice. Glory to God. His payment's enough for the whole world. Do you see that? It's in 1 John 2, 2. So does this, does this mean all the world is saved? No, so you've got to receive this. Do you have plans on Christmas morning? Well, make for sure you're not alone and join us here at Accelerate Church on Sunday, December 25th for a special Christmas service. It's happening at 10 a.m. and it will be for the entire family. We'd love to have you join us for our special Christmas Day service. The real meaning of Christmas is about you receiving the greatest gift ever given. Now, a lot of people in American culture they like to give. There was actually a, a pastor, I don't know him personally, but I know a pastor that knows him, who did a little study, and I don't know how scientific it was. He dressed like a hobo, went to the streets, and he started offering business people that walk by money. And almost every single person, no, I don't want that. I don't want your money. He said, it's weird. There's like this thing that goes on in American culture where there is a segment of society that's always asking for a handout, but there's another segment of society that to them, that's a diss. It hits against their pride, right? Well, so we're to walk this balance. You know, everything we have is the Lord has given it to us. And I just got to say this. If you're just going to sit on your haunches and do nothing, don't expect God to bless. He blesses those that put their hand to the plow. Once you put your hand to the plow, now you've given God something to bless. But don't think for a minute it's going to be by the toil of your own brow. Why? Because I have an atoning sacrifice that paid and it said, hey, bring me your poverty, I'll bring you the blessing. Bring me your sickness, I'll bring you health and wholeness. Glory to God. His payment is enough for the whole world. But to receive it, all anyone has to do is humble themselves like a little child and receive what he did by turning from sin and calling on the name of the Lord. Now, you'd think everybody would do that. But most people must not realize the condition they're actually in. 1 John 4.10 says it like this. I love the book of all these books John wrote are powerful. Of course, every book of the Bible is powerful. It's divinely inspired. But he says here in 1 John 4.10, In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. There's that big word again, but I'm showing you this is why all of heaven celebrated because heaven knew what many on earth did not know. What? That the wall of separation, that wall of sin was now being torn down. The separation between you and God the Father, where if he did manifest himself to you, would kill you instantaneously because he's holy. That wall now is being torn down by the blood and the sacrifice atonement of Jesus Christ, and he's the only way. He's the only way to be free of your sins. No longer do you have to be bound up in sins. Oh, there it is. The real meaning, once again, of Christmas. Go back a chapter to 1 John chapter 3. Aren't you thankful for the word? Yes. Hopefully you're getting something out of this. Yes. Nothing else. You got some cud to chew on this week now. You've been chewing on turkey long enough. Time to get you some word in you, right? <laughs> Anybody have turkey this week? Anybody have leftover turkey this week? Me and my kids and my dogs all did. It says in 1 John 3, 8, he who sins is of the devil. <laughs> I, I forgot uh, 
The Bible doesn't consult all these modern relevant classes of how to speak in such a way that no one's offended. I mean, you talk about just blunt right in our face. He who sins is of the devil. Now, why is that? Because the devil sinned from the beginning. That's what it says right there, right? He's the author of all lies, and he's the one that wants to get you in a tangled web of sin and then wants you to turn around and blame God for the tangled web you weaved. For this purpose, here's what I want to emphasize. 1 John 3, 8, if you're listening by radio, get your Bible out right now. Look this up. Those of you streaming, get your Bible out. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. You know what I saw when I read that? The real meaning of Christmas. Here's why he showed up. Here's why heaven was rejoicing and praising and why you should too. He showed up that he might destroy the works of the devil. I like that. Destroy means to loosen. It means to melt. It means to dissolve. Woo! Jesus came, and we celebrate Christmas because he came to melt the chains of sin, the chains of sickness, the chains of disease and poverty and depression and everything that would try to bind up humankind. He came and melted that away. Glory to God. Shoo. We have a reason to celebrate. Somebody say, the king is here. here. Say, so you got a reason. You got a reason. Sometimes you got to remind yourself of that. Well, man, I ain't feeling it at all. It's because you've been sitting around for four days doing nothing. See, people, well, I ain't feeling it at all today. Anointing's not there. Here's where you made a big mistake. You ignored all the warnings that it's not a safe guide to go by your feelings. See, people in that day would not think that a king is born in a cave. You went by your feelings. There was no room for him in the end. A lot more important people there already. The king? There ain't no king. That's a little baby that, well, hope they even make it. Well, let me just tell you this. Uh, They made it. You know why? They always followed divine instructions. Well, that concludes today's broadcast, but it is not the end of Pastor Jeremy's sermon or sermon series on the real meaning of Christmas. You can find all of that online at our website, accelerate.church.cc. There on the media tab, you'll find all the sermons Pastor Jeremy's preached. And hey, if you're in the local area, just come hear him in person. We're here Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. And we'd love to have you.